be studying right now, um, or procrastinating studying, doing something different than being here. Um, so I'm glad that you can make it. Um, so what is our purpose? Um, I think this is really a big question. As college students, we're often told that we don't know what our purpose is. Um, we're told that we have to experience some life, we have to go see some things, travel some places, uh, to figure that out, maybe some time down the line we'll get that figured out and you know, good for us then. Um, but what I'm going to talk about tonight is where I found my purpose um, and where I think that all of us um, can and should find our purpose. And I think that starts with the fact that we're asking ourselves the wrong question. People are asking us the wrong, wrong question. Um, it shouldn't be what is our purpose, but what is God's purpose. Um, because I think as Christians and as believers, that's really essential to us understanding our purpose is understanding, well, what is God's purpose, actually? Um, I'm sorry to end on an illustration here. Yes. Ah, okay, I guess I have to point that way. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to start this illustration um, called the World Vision Illustration. Um, like Troy said, um, I learned this illustration with the traveling team. Um, and just a couple of like ground rules here. So I'm going to ask questions. And when I ask questions, I want people to answer my questions. <laughs> it makes me feel better and it makes things flow a lot better. So when I ask a question, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll call on you. I'll probably ask two or three people to answer before I'll move on. So the faster we answer questions, the faster we move. Got it? Cool. Um, so in this illustration, somewhere over there, there's two people, um, the Christian and the world Christian. Um, and I'll say that the world Christian, this isn't talking about a uh, worldly Christian, um, but someone who has um, a little bit of a different understanding than what the um, basic Christian might have. And this understanding is different in three ways. Um, in God's word, God's world, and God's work. Um, <laughs> pointing at me, there we go. Um, so the first of these being God's word. Um, and a good way to kind of compare this difference uh, a normal Christian might look at God's word um, much like a yearbook. So, here's the first question. When you look at a yearbook, what's the first thing you look for? Your own picture. Thank you, that's great. <laughs> Yourself. So, the, the Christian looks at the Bible, and what's the first thing that they look for is, how does this apply to me? What is God saying to me here? Um, and how can I apply this to my life? Which is good. That's not a bad thing to do. But that's not the entirety of the picture that we're looking for here. Um, so the world Christian, on your hand, looks at the Bible and says, what is God doing here? What is God saying here? And how can I maybe come into that? I'm not specifically looking for themselves. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of passages here that will kind of demonstrate this. Um, God has this purpose that he's displayed in his word from beginning to end, from Genesis to Revelation. Um, there's actually over, I mean, ask this, how many mission verses on missions do you think are in the Bible? Let's get a couple of guesses. Forty-two. Three. Three. That's a good guess. That's what I put there. There's actually over fifteen hundred, um, but for your sake, I'm only going to go over a couple tonight. Um, so the first of these, Genesis twelve one through Genesis Genesis twelve one through three, and the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, those who dishonor you, I will curse, and in you, all the families, or all the nations of the earth will be blessed. This is God saying in the very beginning, chapter 12 of the Bible, you could pick it up, 30 pages into the Bible, he's saying, Abraham, through you, I'm going to bless all nations. Next verse, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. We've probably heard this one, the Great Commission. Um, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you, always to the end of the age. So here is God. He sent his son Jesus, who, yes, he died for our sins personally, but he also died for a bigger purpose. Um, and we're seeing that here, and that now he's telling his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. Um, this, is, this wasn't supposed to be a personal thing by itself but a collective um, change as well. Um, taking me to the end here, um, Revelation 7, 9 through 10. Um, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all peoples, um, and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hand, 
and crying out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. This is the picture of the end times. This is the picture, I'm at the end of all things. This is God saying that I will complete this purpose that I have started with Abraham, that I have continued with Jesus, and that I am finishing here in Revelation and saying that there will be people from every tribe, tongue, and nation that will worship me at the throne. And I think this is so cool because we see that God um, has promised us that this will be completed. Um, so, you know, these are some com- maybe some more common examples we might think of, but there's a lot of ways that the Bible talks about God's heart for the world um, that we sometimes miss or that sometimes get um, not paid attention to as much. So here's a couple of examples um, that you might have heard of, but you didn't realize that they were actually talking about God's heart for the world. Um, first of these, uh, David and Goliath. How many people like David and Goliath? There's a story. If you grew up in church, you probably heard the story. It's one of my favorites, you know, he's slinging the stone. Yeah, somebody back there is doing the motion. Um, so then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I'll give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. So normally if we hear this um, in a church sermon, um, what's the message going to be? Well, you know, God can help us defeat all of our giants. Um, and that's, that is true. He can. Um, but that's not the point of this story. Um, there's actually an ending to this. So let me read this last sentence again. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines the state of the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Um, God, he did all of this um, so that the world would know that he was God and he is Lord of all to make his name known and bring glory to himself. Another example here. Um, Be still in the land of God. It's so, like, that's so, like, warm and fuzzy, right? We put, you know, Christian everything has its first sign. Go to Family Christian, and there's Christian posters, Christian <laughs> calendars, um, Christian, name it. If it's in Family Christian, you can put, be still and know that I am God on it, and, you know, it's fun, right? We see it everywhere, all over the place. Be still and know that I am God. Um, but what if I told you, so be still and know that I am God, the reference for that is Psalm 46, 10. What if I told you that that's an incomplete reference, and it actually should look like this? A. That means that there's a B. So what is B? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Just to show of hands, how many people knew that there was a second part to that verse and that's what it was? Maybe very few, ten maybe. Um, I think that's one of the that's one of the craziest examples because we see it all over the place, but we so rarely hear the second half of the verse. Um, so, going back to our illustration here, the world Christian looks at God's word, and they don't just see themselves, but they see that this is really showing God's heart for the world from beginning to end. Um, the next of these, so again, world Christian would look at this, they see God's heart for the world, and they say, well, what is in the, what is the world? Who's in the world? Um, so I'm going to put a box up here. Um, this is the 1040 window. So, just to give you an idea of what the 1040 window is, where it's at. Um, here's a picture. The 1040 window goes from 10 degrees north to 40 degrees north latitude. Um, starts about Africa all the way over to Japan. Um, and why is this place significant? 97% of the world's unreached people live in this area. Um, so when I say unreached, um, this is different from unsaved. Uh, we might have classmates who might be unsaved. Um, you know, either they maybe grew up in church and they don't go anymore, um, or maybe they just haven't really, that's never, they've never chosen to follow Jesus. Um, someone who's unsaved um, just ha- simply hasn't chosen to follow Jesus. Um, someone who's unreached, um, has never even heard of him, probably will live and die um, without a chance to ever hear about him. Um, very big difference. Um, so let me ask you this question. So if 97% of the world's unreached um, people and people groups are in this area, Um, what percentage of missionaries do you think are sent to this area? 25%. I heard 97 back there, 25, 20. Somebody actually knows the answer. Um, Actually, about 4% of missionaries go to this place. Um, So if 97% of the unreached people are there, but only 4% of the missionaries are going there, 
that would be like, okay, I'm, let's see, you guys are all the unreached people group. I'm the one like Christian, and 96% of the missionaries come and talk to me, and 4% come and talk to you. A little bit of a, a gap there. Um, so, who, so who lives in this window? Go uh, through this acronym, um, SOM. So, uh, first of these is tribals. Um, so this is kind of all the people that live in this area and their beliefs. Um, tribals, um, primarily animistic people, they believe in spirits. Um, they believe that they need to appease these spirits and do things to make these spirits um, not punish them. And they live in fear of these spirits, really at all times. Um, H mm-hmm. is Hindus. Um, Hindus uh, believe in about 330 million gods. Yeah, 330 million. Um, so these people um, would believe in reincarnation and would try and um, do everything they can, have their good outweigh their bad in hopes that they can um, escape um, from this cycle of reincarnation. Um, you, we're going to take the you and you know, get a little bit crazy here, turn on its side um, for Chinese. Um, this is primarily a, an unreligious, yeah, my PowerPoint's a little bit right out there, primarily unreligious. Um, there's some different philosophies that might be present here. You might have heard like Confucianism or Taoism, um, but primarily unreligious. Um, here's Muslims. Um, not us, uh, Muslims. Um, Muslims uh, believe that Allah would be God and Muhammad is the prophet. Um, and they, um, their hope is that um, when they die, that Allah would have uh, showed them grace, to show them mercy, um, and allow them to go to paradise. But they really have no way of um, knowing for sure whether that will happen or really um, knowing what happens. Um, and last is Buddhists. Um, Buddhists again. Um, Buddhists uh, also would probably believe um, in a reincarnation, um, but their goal is to end suffering. Um, so they believe that all life is suffering, um, and their goal is to uh, reduce um, sensation, reduce feeling, and hope that they can reduce suffering. Um, and really just kind of a, a difficult way, um, a hard way for them to live. Um, so again, the world Christian looks at this, and they see God, God's word and understand that he has a heart for the world, and they look at the world and they see um, where these people are that don't know about God and don't have a chance to know about God are, and you know, they say, what can I do about that? Um, so there's two things, go and send. Um, and then for go, there's also two ways that we can go, across the ocean or across the campus. So across the ocean is what it sounds like. Um, pick up your life, move to another country, another place where people don't know about Jesus, and tell them about Jesus. Um, this is what you think of when you think of a missionary normally. Um, but there's also another way, going across the campus. So there's a lot of international students um, that come to the United States. We probably notice of some on our campus. How many people have had a class with an international student? So almost everybody. Um, so we know that there's international students here. And here's the cool thing is a lot of times these international students are coming from places in the 1040 window. Um, and we have the opportunity to reach them while they're here. And just a couple of statistics um, about going. Um, this is the number of people groups. So I talked about people groups before. Uh, people group is simply, um, think of like an ethnic or a cultural group. Um, but it's typically speak a, the same language. Um, and there would be low barriers to the gospel spreading within that people group. Um, but when it goes beyond that, that's a different people group. Uh, so there's about 16,500 people groups about 6,700 that are still unreached. So we're a little over halfway in terms of this path. Um, so for there's 78,000 evangelical Christians for every one unreached people group, and about 900 churches for every one unreached people group. So would you think that if 900 churches got together and said, we want to try and reach an unreached people group, do you think that should be an achievable task if they set their minds to it? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, Max talked about internationals. There's over 800,000 international students that study in the United States. About 62% of these um, come from countries within the 1040 window. Um, so the top 10 countries you see here, China, India, South Korea, Canada, Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, Japan, Vietnam, uh, Mexico, Turkey. Um, and 40% of the world's 220 current heads of state studied in the United States. 
So this means that the students that we're reaching, these students are very influential in their countries when they go back home. So the other way is by sending. Um, we can either give or pray. So give um, financially. We talk about offering. I give offering messages weekly. Um, but it's important, like Troy said, to give towards causes that are going to people who are unreached by the gospel and who don't know about Jesus. Um, and then also praying. So um, praying for people that don't know about the gospel. You know, a lot of times we pray about ourselves. The world Christian looks at the world and they understand these things and they pray for the world. Um, they understand that there's people that don't know about Jesus, so they so they pray um, for these people groups and for these places um, that don't know about Jesus. Uh, kind of a, a statistic here on um, sending. Um, so there's 600 billion, 700 billion dollars that's given to Christian causes. Um, but where does that go? Um, just under 70 or just under 97 percent of that goes to local pastoral ministries. Um, so, you're, if you have a head pastor at home, or um, your uh, youth pastor, or worship pastor, whatever it is, your general um, cost it takes to run a church, nine, just under 97% goes to that. Um, just under 3% of Christian giving goes towards home missions. So that might be inner city outreach. Um, I suppose maybe even campus ministry could be considered a uh, home mission. Um, going towards places that maybe the gospel isn't as present, but it's still present um, and trying to reach out in that way. Uh, about 0.3% goes to Christian mission in um, the non-Christian world, so places um, maybe in Europe where the gospel, there are churches there and there are Christians there, but the gospel um, but it's not necessarily considered unreached, or unreached I guess. And then about 0.01% um, goes towards um, actual unreached people groups. So to kind of put that in perspective, for every $100,000 um, that Christians uh, make, they give about $1 to the unreached. Um, which I think is a very staggering um, kind of like idea in terms of what we've seen as far as what the state of the world is. Um, so going back to this, the world Christian, now we understand um, that God's word, God's world, and God's work, they see those in a different way and they understand them in a different way. Um, so there's also a third person in this illustration. Um, this person is the mobilizer. So this is someone um, that they, they become a world Christian, they understand these things, but they also desire to tell others about this as well. Um, so the mobilizer goes and tells the Christian um, about God's heart for the world, about the state of the world, and what they can do about it, and they help that Christian become a world Christian. So, <laughs> here's the thing, is if a, if a Christian just becomes a world Christian, that's a plus one. So we have one more person that's engaged in this um, process of, sharing, of reaching the world for God's name. Um, but if a world Christian also becomes a mobilizer, that's a times ten, because they're now also going and telling others about it. About it. Hence, world vision illustration. Um, so what are some next steps? What are some things, you know, we, I know when I saw this for the first time, like you guys are right now, maybe, um, I was like, well, I'm a college student, you know, what can I, you know, I can't just pick up my life and go to, I mean, I suppose you could, um, you know, if God's leading you, don't let me stop you, um, <laughs> but I can't just pick up my life and move to China next week, um, you know, I finished in college. Um, so what are some practical things that we can be doing now? Um, these are just a list of things that I made um, that are relevant to all of us. Um, so the spring break trip, before I talked about a Casas trip going to Mexico. Um, that's a great way you can do it. You don't have school then, um, great opportunity to go um, and be a part of taking the gospel and the love of Christ to people who don't know. Um, the Germany trip, so his house does a trip um, each summer, goes to Germany for about two weeks, um, and they work with youth um, and help share the love of Christ there with the youth in Germany. Um, ministry to the Point, um, I think there's several people that have gone to Ministry at the Point. Um, this is a summer discipleship um, program, I guess, that uh, his house runs um, or puts on, um, where students go and work at um, Cedar Point for the summer, and they uh, interact with and share the gospel with their co-workers. Um, from talking to the people that have been there, there's a lot of internationals that work there over the summer, and could be a great opportunity to um, share the gospel with someone that may have not heard it before. Um, the IT project, uh, 
Troy talked about that. That's where I heard this for the first time. A seven-week program in uh, Los Angeles, California, um, teaching college students about the world and to develop a heart for the world and what we can do about it. Um, prayer meeting. There's a prayer meeting every week. Um, if you feel like you have a heart to pray for people that don't know about the gospel, go to the prayer meeting and come and um, come prepared to pray for a country or for um, an area that, that, that doesn't um, isn't reached with the gospel. Um, international students. I know Heather's been working, and some other students have been um, making some international friends. Um, and hopes to share the gospel with them. I'm sure she would love if um, there's some more people that were interested in that and excited about that. Um, so talk to her if that you know, sounds like something that, if that's something that you feel like God is kind of putting on your heart. Um, so uh, I'm going to show a video here. I'm almost done. I'm going to show a video here um, and wrap up kind of with a quick quote and some thoughts. Um, I just want to like challenge you guys. Um, as this video plays and as I go um, after this, just really, um, really try and feel and understand um, what God might be trying to put on your hearts right now and what God might be trying to say to you. Um, because it's really easy for us, uh, where we're at, to just block these things out and um, to just kind of zone out um, and forget. But I just challenge you guys and just really ask you guys to try and um, really dig in here for like 10 minutes um, to really see what God is trying to say to you right now.
guys, what we do matters. Our life matters. I'm going to ask you guys to close your eyes here for a second. Um, I'm going to read a quote. I just want you guys to, to think with me and reflect on that. Um, and just listen to what I say. Um, again, just please let God touch your heart right now. You and I have an average of about 70 to 80 years on this earth. During these years, we are bombarded with the temporary. Make money, get stuff, be comfortable, live well, have fun. In the middle of it all, we get blinded to the eternal, but it's there. You and I stand on the porch of eternity. Both of us will soon stand before God to give an account for our stewardship of the time, the resources, the gifts, and ultimately the gospel he has entrusted to us. When that day comes, I am convinced we will not wish we had given more of ourselves to living the American dream. We will not wish we had made more money, acquired more stuff, lived more comfortably, taken more vacations, watched more television, pursued greater retirement, or been more successful in the eyes of this world. Instead, we will wish we had given more of ourselves to living for the day when every nation, tribe, people, and language will bow around the throne and sing the praises of the Savior who delights in radical obedience and the God who deserves it. I ask you again, what is our purpose? Our purpose is God's purpose. God desires to see people from every nation, tribe, and tongue come to worship him before the throne. Um, so I just pray this for all of us, and this is my prayer for all of us, and myself included, um, every day, um, the rest of our lives, just that we can um, live more for the day when we're all standing in heaven, um, saying, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty was and is and is to come. Let me pray.